Well, the Rio Grande Theater is the last operating two-story adobe theater in the country. And it's on the National Register of Historic Places. It's been given several other distinctions. The other thing that's important, and I don't know if, that you can see around uh, the interior of the building here, is when we were doing the renovation, we uncovered these beautiful murals downstairs. And they are actually the crests of the first families of New Mexico. The theater went out of operation in the early 1930s when the building actually burned down, and or most of it burned down, and it had to be renovated. And then again in uh, 1998, it stopped running movies, and it became dormant. And at that time, it became the uh, property of the Doniana Arts Council, and we were the people who raised the money to renovate it. That's when they were starting to renovate the Rio Grande and I thought that was awesome that they would be doing it. I had never seen it as I grew up as a child and then to see the interior, all that, the beautiful work that is on all around the stage and to be able to keep up the traditions of the Rio Grande Theater and to maintain a beautiful structure, that was what was the most memorable part and really appreciate the Rio Grande Theater. My in-laws' uh, family holds uh, a production around Christmas time called Los Pastores, and uh, we were able to hold it in the Rio Grande Theater now. And just to see the renovations that were done and that, and it brings back great memories. Uh, I see the theater now and I think about it every time I walk in there, about the difference the theater is now then I remember it then. Uh, good times in Cruces, good times at the Rio Grande. The heyday was during the 50s and 60s when the kids would go up and down May Street. This was the first run movies. It was the only place in town that really had the best movies, the best food uh, you know, in terms of the theater food. And that's what people speak really fondly of. I can smell the popcorn, I can see Elvis. That's what we nicknamed him, the, the, the concession manager that was there. He had big old pork chop sideburns and we called him Elvis. The Rio Grande was, you know, the lights and the, and the smell of the popcorn uh, cooking, baking, whatever they do, popping, and the, and the candies, uh, the licorice, and anyway, it was, it was a memorable day for us. This is really a community center. Uh, we call it a performing arts center, and it's used for dance, music, theater, uh, movies, but for the most part, it is a, a multi-purpose venue uh, for local groups. And so even though the theater only seats 426 people, it is still beloved by so many people. Uh, people have so many fond memories. They come and tell us stories about working here or having their first date here, that kind of thing, bringing their families here. So many very good, uh, vivid memories. As a young man walking all the way from campus to go see several different movies when that was the only show in town. I am currently with a woman who we went on our first date together in 1982. We went and saw a movie. It just makes me get all googly inside. My granny Bloxham lived on 3rd Street. That's quite a distance from the Rio Grande, but on Saturdays, I'd stay overnight with Granny. Cousin B and I would walk to the Rio Grande Theater. Uh, we happened to have my nephew with us, and he's 10 years younger than us, so he was quite the little fellow when we walked to the Rio Grande Theater. It was a Disney program. I don't remember the program itself. He had never been to a movie before like that. He was in awe. His eyes were deer in the headlight kind of thing. And my cousin and I found, wound up watching him more than the movie because he was in awe of that Rio Grande Theater. So as far as the future, I just think it continues to be that place that is the home to many community groups and the place where we can bring in uh, top quality artists uh, to give, to, give Las Cruces uh, the best entertainment that they can have. Mm -hmm.